fails on three levels here. It fails on diagnosis of what the question was, on planning what the answer should be, on being able to talk in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Recent polls have shown a fifth of Americans can't locate the U.S. on a world map. Why do you think this is? I personally believe that U.S. Americans are unable to do so because uh, some people out there in our nation don't have maps and uh, I believe that our ed education like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq everywhere like such as and I believe that they should uh, our education over here in the U.S. should help the U.S. Or, or should help South Africa and should help the Iraq and the Asian countries so we will be able to build up our future for our children. Thank you very much, South Carolina. Okay, I mean, it, 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 the thing, of course, is this, this girl is an honor student in South Carolina, which is, and I, I use this for education talks, but that's what we're producing, um, an honor student, so you have to rethink it. But there was always a discussion that she was just under pressure. And so there's a later video, which I won't show you, but there's a later video on Today Show, having practiced now the right answer to this question and still getting it completely wrong. It's, it's really quite fascinating. All right, so let's understand, since I'm very concerned with two issues, uh, these issues on two bases, one on the basis of AI and one on the basis of teaching, uh, how do you transfer knowledge? And so I'm going to I'll give you all a quiz right now. How many exits on a 757? Exits. Where, how many life rafts, where are they? So you've heard this video, what, a thousand times? Are the four doors on the left side and the four doors on the right side of the aircraft. All exits are identified by lighted exit signs, and some exits are further identified by orange or red lighting. Oxygen flow is controlled by altitude. At lower altitudes, the bag on the mask may not be fully inflated. Your life vest is located in a container underneath your seat. To remove the life vest, pull down on the tab on the front of the container. If the slide does not automatically inflate, Pull the red handle. Jump into the slide in the seated position with your arms crossed and move away from the aircraft. A life raft is located at each door except those doors just aft of the wings. There is an additional life raft. Okay, so you don't know that. You only heard it, I don't know, me, me at least a thousand times. Probably you live a similar life to me. So why would you be that you don't know it? Well, you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, more importantly, it relates to no goal you have at the moment. Because when you get on a plane, the last thing you're thinking about is how I'm going to get out when it crashes. It's not irrational for you to think about that, really, but you don't. And how would they get you to think about that? They would get you by having a simulated um, crash before every takeoff. Right? I don't know why they don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Okay, and the other idea that we misunderstand about knowledge, and we, we can't tell people things if they don't have a goal, relates to it. And my favorite example of this is always, I won't ask in this audience, because this audience will be embarrassed by not knowing the answer. I always ask everybody in the room when I talk, tell me the quadratic equation. On average, one out of a thousand know it, and that person was just tutoring his son for the SATs. Exam. Now remember, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the radical of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Everybody write this down and commit it to memory. You will need it. Pete, out please. Of course, the point of the story is you won't need it. And we know you won't need it. And so when they say it, there's not a person in the room who thinks they'll need it. And that, you know, you can tell them all they want that they need it. No one thinks they need it. They don't need it. OK. So if you did want to tell somebody the quadratic equation, if you did think it mattered, or the exits, you're going to have to communicate that stuff just in time. That's my point. You can communicate beforehand, a week beforehand, a year beforehand, forget it, it's not happening, it doesn't matter to anybody, they don't remember it. I would ask students in front of every, before every class I taught in the beginning of a semester, how many people could pass last year's exams right now in all your courses? Every single one of them agreed they could not, but if they studied, they could. And I said, that very point is you can't study. You either learned it or you didn't learn it. I know you know how to study and cram for an exam. It's not the point. So nobody at Northwestern or at Yale, when I asked that question, ever thought they could pass last year's exams. Gee, is something wrong? Well, anyway, that's, that's my sideline. Side okay, so I'm really interested in the reminding machine. What is the reminding machine? The reminding machine is, well, it might look like that. Okay, it might look just like your cell phone with a video, not necessarily of a football game, uh, but of a talking head, like the, one I was, the ones I was just showing, and millions of them, hopefully, where it tells you the right story at the right time. Well, how would it know you were in the right time to be told it? 
That's the key question, okay? And how would it find it? Those are all my key questions. So the reminding machine problem looks like this. What stories do we collectively know? How do we deliver them on time? Uh, and I cannot, I, I would like to come here and talk to you about Army stories, but I don't know anything about the Army, okay? Apart from my name, which actually comes because my parents were both Air Force officers and thought it would be funny to call me Roger Wilco. I, I, I got rid of the Wilco. Uh, but apart from my name, really, I don't have much familiarity with the Army. I've been an ARPA contract, so it doesn't mean you know much. I've worked on ARPA training programs. It still doesn't mean you know much. And I'm not going to work with military or, or Afghanistan stories much, a little tiny bit. But I'm going to talk about shipping. Why? Because among my many pursuits is uh, the advisor, I'm an advisor to the shipping industry, which is interested in the reminding regime problem, it turns out. And that's a ship that I was on for a while. I think it's in Dublin Harbor, if I remember. It doesn't matter. I've been on that ship a lot. Okay, let's imagine you're on a ship going through the Suez Canal. That's the Suez Canal. Uh, and there's a fire in the boiler. Now, I actually, um, in order to boil, you don't know what the boiler is, doesn't matter. In order, to, in order to put out a fire in the boiler, you have to stop the ship. So, uh, you need to know that. I actually uh, play softball in the old guy's softball league. One, guy, some, one day, somebody introduced himself as a ship captain. I said, you're a ship captain? Really? I said, what do you do if you're in the Suez Canal and your boiler steps on, goes on fire? He says, full speed ahead, which is the right answer. I knew it was a ship captain. Why is it the right answer? How would we know it's the right answer? How do we know what the right answer is? Let's assume you don't know that answer, which is a safe bet that no one in the room knows the answer. How do you understand, how do I, can I help you do that? Every captain isn't born knowing that answer. Well, now let's look at what the indexing looks like. Let's talk about Proverbs first. Choose the lesser of two evils, which it turns out relates very strongly to this example, um, because you may have to make a choice between two plans, stop or not stop. Um, and we know what that looks like. There's a goal, choose between plans, there's conditions, each plan has a bad side effect, and there's advice that the system can give you, choose the least bad outcome. Better the devil you know than the devil you don't know is very similar, and it has a similar representation, but not exactly the same representation. Don't jump from the frying pan into the fire. Again, don't make it worse when you're trying to deal with, with, with certain difficulties, avoiding danger. They're similar. These are the kinds of representations I'm talking about when I'm talking about indexes. I'll show them in more detail in a minute. That's why I'm going too fast. And this last one, which you may not know because it you has know, a Jewish word in it, um, is a proverb which I have found myself saying a lot to people in the last week or two, couple weeks. I, I, I don't know why. One of them is in the room. And, and, I, and I, when I, I do it because I, people in this society, I think, are more and more trying to do too many things at once. And I quite frequently say, uh, hey, you can only sit in one chair with one dog. Um, and the issue is, what's that about? Well, it's a, it's a classic goal. There are all these goals that are, are classic. Um, I'll, show, I'll show them to you in a minute. All these goals are classic. Decision making, make a choice. These are goals that have been around since caveman times. It's not, I'm not making up goals like fire, rocket ship. The goals, the plans, do something you want to do. This stuff has been around for as long as there have been people. Okay? Dogs and cats have some of these plans or goals. This is not something that's a conscious kind of thing. It's how the mind collects information. So now let's talk about stories. And I'm going to talk about shipping stories because that's what I know. All right. So this is a quick one about a, 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 a noise in the cylinder. They don't know what to do. Uh, should they stop the ship and fix it or not? The reason why that's a problem is that the way the shipping industry works is if you stop the ship to try and fix something, the people charter your ship. In this case, Shell Oil had chartered their ship. And then when you deliver it four days late, the price of oil has changed. So they get very mad, and they think you're fooling around with them, and you've maybe made a business on the side in stopping it. So you can't just stop. And to fix something. So this is just a story about that, that the reputation, the lesson at the bottom, reputation with the charterer is the most important issue. Because if you keep screwing the Shell Oil, you're not going to get any more business from Shell Oil, clearly. Okay. How can we index those kinds of stories that are told just in time? Here's the second ship in story. Uh, a, a, a ship was, was grounded in South Korea because there was a coming typhoon and they told everybody, uh, all, uh, ordered all ships were ordered into a cove for protection, but there were so many ships they banged into each other. <laughs> and so the, yeah, the, uh, the lesson of the story is don't listen to the people who are telling you what to do and figure it out beforehand. Uh, the third shipping story is the very story we want to find. Okay? And that is the story about somebody who's going across the Suez Canal, who had the fire started and he didn't know what to do, and then he knew something that you don't know, that I know, that now you'll know, which is that the corrupt authorities run the Suez Canal. And I can tell you some more information about the Suez Canal, which is important, which I showed you in the picture, which is the ships are lined up right back one to the next. And if you stop the ship, the idea that you might run aground or bang into the ship ahead of you is very likely. And if that happens, you have just lost half the value of your cargo and your ship. That's the rule. If you knew that, you wouldn't think about stopping your ship. That's why the guy said full speed ahead. But suppose you don't know that. I want to get that story to you at the very moment of need. That's the point. 
that's the point. I mean, I'm talking, I said this is true in every domain. It just happens to work in shipping. A fourth shipping story is a, uh, the ship was laid up in Durban. That means it was like, resting. There was not enough work for it or whatever. Um, and then it got loose of the boy and, and, it, and, it, got, and, it, and it had a whole range of problems. And the lesson of it is just because the authorities say that boy is good doesn't mean it isn't. And you should go bullying him. That should, you should be um, investigating it before you lay up. And the fifth and last one is another fire in a different situation in the ship, which caused the ship to not to be able to, to start at all midship. And what they were learning was an engineering lesson on how to re-engineer the ship. OK. So what are the goals? These can be discerned. I don't have to know this is a complete list, but it's close to one. And they relate very strongly to the 12 pro cognitive processes I'm talking about. Because for each of those, we know a lot about how to influence and do teamwork and describe. And we know about, uh, we have the goals of choosing a partner or taking care of people or having positive emotions. Not, these are all pretty standard. And we know about acquisitions, a big part of human life. And neg negotiation is a very big part of human life. Diagnosis is a big part of human life. All these things are the kinds of goals that drive the system. So there aren't infinite numbers of them. They are, there are a, a kind of limited number of them typically around those 12 cognitive processes. Um, OK, so now let's go look at shipping story one and see what the index might look like. It's a, it's a goal, top stands for thematic organization point, which is something I wrote about 30 years ago. And if you don't know, you're excused. Um, it's a decision-making goal where you need to make a choice by prioritizing threat and goals. What goals do we know about the ship captain? Well, since he's a ship captain, we don't have to ask him his goals. We know his goals, because ship captains all have the same goals. Get to the port on time, keep the ship safe, keep the ship owner happy, keep the charterer happy. A lot of times these conflict. Uh, I was told a story about the conf conflict between the ship owner and the charterer's happiness when a ship lost its anchor. And retrieving the anchor is a, they're expensive, so the owner wanted that. But the, you would lose time, in, your, in this particular case, there's also a Suez Canal story, you'd lose your, your slot for going through the Suez Canal, so you'd make the charterer unhappy. So you've got to decide who's more happy and who ma matters, and it turns out that's a math ca calculation because it's just about money. So understanding that that's what's going on here, it helps you understand the value. So this is one of these, this is a Suez Canal story, and they always have at the end common knowledge, in this case the proverb, lesser of two eagles, uh, some advice and some domain knowledge you may not have. Okay, the shipping story, the second one that I gave you, is again a dealing with difficulties, avoid danger kind of thing. And it also has advice not to make things worse. Local authorities can't be trusted. Anyone who knows shipping knows that. Um, pro uh, domain knowledge, open sea is safer than a crowded harbor. Anyone who knows shipping knows that. Um, and it is exactly an example of don't, don't jump from the frying pan into the fire because they got out of a bad situation into a worse situation when they were in South Korea. But the story we were, the key story we're interested in, shipping story number three, has those goals I said. It's again an issue of prioritized threat and goals. And the key piece here, which you wouldn't have known, is the domain knowledge that the Suez Canal authorities are corrupt. Okay, that's pretty important to understand, not wildly amazing, but pretty important to understand. And the financial consequences is decision is what drives it. This is the kind of stuff that's going on unconsciously indexing stories. And what I'm arguing is if you want to have collections of millions of stories, you've got to have a very consistent indexing theme or you're not going to find stuff. So you have to have the scheme work. And I don't go through all these with you. This is a, the local authorities can't be trusted is again on uh, true of shipping f of number four as well. Um, and for five, we had a f another fire, but it's not the fire one we want to come up. We don't want to have every fire story come up. It's not a key word thing. It's a fire story that, that the, a the answer to which is understanding something about physics, if you look at the details of the story, and, and engineering. And that's nothing whatsoever to do with corrupt authority. So even though if you found all fire stories on ship, you would be doing a useless thing. You might have thousands of them. There are no value. So it isn't words. The words have nothing to do with this. 